Okay, let's talk about the MTTC Elementary Education Math Test. And actually, this is a math subtest of the MTTC Elementary Education uh, Exam or Test. Of course, there's different uh, uh, subtests that make up that particular assessment. And if you're watching this video, assume that you're preparing for this test and it goes without saying that um, you would also know that this is a test for those of you who want to teach elementary education in the great state of Michigan. So uh, what we're going to do here is take a look at a math problem that um, you'll certainly want to be able to kind of handle um, for this particular the math that's on this particular uh, test but then we're going to discuss a lot of other things as well but uh, before we get going I'll tell you a little bit about myself my name is John I'm the founder of tablet class math I'm a middle and high school math teacher so I certainly know what it's like to take certification exams and uh, uh, these days even when it comes to elementary education there's um, you know uh, kind of a you know, at first glance, people would just think, oh, elementary education, you know, what teachers need to know in terms of math. Well, it's like maybe people would say, well, we just need to know place value, fractions, decimals, you know, uh, times tables, etc. Well, not not really. You're going to need to know a, lot, know a lot more math, even at the elementary uh, level, than you may think. So if you haven't taken a look at what kind of math that's on the MTTC elementary education math subtest, you definitely want to, uh, you know, take a look at that. Now, um, a little bit about myself in terms of what I do with Tablet Class Math. I have many, many courses, uh, developed this over many, many years, and I actually offer a specific MTTC elementary education um, math subtest prep course. If you're interested, I'm going to leave the link to that course in the description of this video. But, um, Again, it goes without saying that uh, you really want to take a look at how much math you need to know for this. It's considerable. I kind of but maybe sum it up as high school level math. You're going to need to know a lot of algebra, geometry, and you're also going to need to know the basic stuff as well, um, or more the, ele the actual elementary level of mathematics. But this is a good little practice problem here. Um, and then uh, I'm going to give you a chance to solve it. And then, of course, I'm going to go through it. And this is just, again, just a pop quiz. Uh, but this type of problem and what we're going to be talking about is something that you would be um, wanting to know, okay, it, it's the appropriate skill level that you're going to have to, you know, have in order to do well on this particular test. So here's the problem. Um, eight to the two-thirds power. Okay, I'd like to evaluate, like you to evaluate that. In other words, simplify. Tell me the answer to it. And I want you to do, before you do this, okay, I want you to do it in two ways. First, I want you to see if you can do this without the aid of a calculator. Then, I'd like you to actually use a calculator if you know how to use a calculator with, <laughs> with respect to this type of problem. So, kind of two parts. See if you can do it without a calculator. If you can't do it without a calculator, see if you can do it with the calculator because there's, um, you know, uh, basically, you know, just knowing how to do this with your calculator is a skill in and of itself. So, I'm going to go ahead and obviously uh, solve this for you here in a second. But if you want to go to give it a try, you may want to pause the video. Okay, so hopefully you've uh, uh, kind of figured out what to do. If you're completely lost, don't worry about it, okay? It's just an indication that obviously you're going to have to, um, you know, really study, prepare for this particular test with the, uh, the math component of it. But even if you got this right, that doesn't, that's in no ways, you know, a validation that, hey, that you're ready to go for the test. It's just one problem. Okay, so we're taking a power, right? So let's just kind of simplify this. I have this two-thirds here, and this is probably maybe throwing most of you, or most of you that are lost are probably like confused with the two-thirds. If I said what is 8 to the second power, 8 squared, that would be like, oh, okay, that's a lot easier problem, right? Because what does 8 squared mean? All of you out there would be, oh, yeah, that's 8 times 8. 8 times 8 is 64, and that is correct, okay? So when we're taking the power, and we just have a, a nice integer value up there, a nice whole number, 2, 3, 4, etc., we kind of, you know, most of us would know what to do in terms of how to evaluate that uh, particular power. Now, when we start throwing fractions around, eh, it gets a little more complex. So before I 
directly answer this, let me go ahead and show you a few things here. So 8 to the 1 half power. Now we have 2 thirds, but I just want to get into a few things here. So 8 to the 1 half power is equal to the square root of 8. So when we start having fractions, okay, well in terms of an exponent of a power, and let me just quickly review. This whole thing we would refer to as a, a power, okay? We kind of use that word power, but the power has particular parts to it. So this part of the power, the big number on the bottom, is the base, okay? And then this little tiny number, the small number up in the upper right hand corner is what we call the exponent. Okay, so we have the base and exponent, the whole thing together is considered a power. Okay, so that's kind of like common nomenclature. So this would be 8 to the 1 half power, where the base is 8 and the exponent is 1 half. Now, here again, I have 1 half, so we're dealing with this radical. Okay, so when we have a radical, there's actually a little invisible 2 here. But we don't write this when it comes to square roots, but the square root of 8 is equal to 8 to the 1 half power. So if I said uh, find out what uh, 9 to the 1 half power is, it would be equivalent to the square root of 9, which is of course plus or minus 3. Okay, so if you see the pattern, this little 2 goes, this little, well we call this the index when we're talking about powers, but let's just kind of follow suit here. What if I have 8 to the 1 third power? Now, just kind of following the pattern here, what do you think this would be equivalent to? Well, hopefully you're saying, okay, well, let's see here. This is still, I have the square root of 8, but it's not the square root, it's just the radical part. And this, too, was the denominator of this 1 half, and I put that over there. So maybe I'm going to put that little 3 right here. And if you wrote this, it would be correct, okay? This is 8 to the 1 third power is equivalent to the cube root of 8. Now, what does that mean? What does a cube root of 8 mean? Well, the cube root means what number times itself three times gets me back to 8. So if you think about that, you have 2, right? 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So now I'm kind of going uh, rather quickly here, covering a lot of topics, uh, uh, kind of in a kind of real crash course <laughs> manner. but. If you're following me so far, that's excellent. Okay, so we're talking about radicals and rational exponents. We call this rational exponents because they're fractional exponents, but they have a, a, an equivalent radical um, uh, ex, uh, equivalent, if you will. Okay, so now let's take a look at this here, 8 to the 2 thirds power. Now, what I can do is I can think of 8 to the 2 thirds power as 8 to the 1 third power squared because there's a property of uh, powers and exponents and let me just show you let me show you an easier example uh, let's see here if I have x to the x squared to the fifth power well if I want to simplify this all I do is multiply this 5 the outer power or the outer exponent to the inner uh, exponent. So this is equivalent to x to the tenth. So this is what we call property of exponents. So what I can do here is just kind of break this apart. So if you look, 8 to the 1 third squared is equivalent to, if I, if I take this 2 and I multiply it, 2 times 1 third is equivalent to 2 thirds. Okay, so this is equivalent to 8 to the 2 thirds power. So hopefully you can kind of see what's going on here. Now, Let's, let, let's focus in on this part here, 8 to the 1 third. Now, we already figured out what 8 to the 1 third was, right? Remember, this is equivalent to the expression, the cube root of 8. So the cube root of 8, what times itself, three times gets us back to 8, is 2. Okay, so 8 to the 1 third power, or the cube root of 8, is equal to 2. So instead of writing 8 to the 1 third power, I can simplify that as being 2. So, or this is now 2 squared. Okay, so I still have this outside exponent 2. So 2 squared, of course, is going to be 2 times 2, which is 4. And then we would be all done. So this is how you um, simplify this particular problem without the aid of a calculator. But now let's do this with a calculator. So here we go, 8 to the 2 thirds. 
Now, depending on what type of calculator you have, um, you're, you're going to want to have to have, or you're going to need a scientific calculator. So you're going to be looking at one of these buttons, okay? It's going to be either be the Y to the X. There may be other buttons, but these are going to probably cover 99% of the calculators out there. So Y to the X or X to the Y or this little symbol here. It's an upside down V. We call that a caret symbol. These are all powers. If I want to figure out what, um, let's see, 2 to the 10th power is, in my calculator I would type in 2. Now to get myself to get the little exponent up here, I would type in one of these keys. Okay, So you have to identify what calculator you, uh, you're uh, using. This is a probably the most typical, especially on more like graphing calculators. This is upside down V, we call it a caret. It's probably the uh, most common uh, function that you'll see. So I would type in caret, and then I would type in 10, and then hit enter, and I would get my answer. So to evaluate 8 to the 2 thirds on your calculator, we would type in 8. Then we would type in our little caret, right? So this is going to give me a power. Now I got to type in the 2 thirds, OK? Here, you're going to want to use the parentheses, OK? And then it would be 2 divided by 3 and then end parentheses. Now, why am I using parentheses? Well, I go into this in my course and other materials. This is very important to why we need to put this 2 thirds in parentheses. I don't want to turn this lesson into too many, like you start going off too many tangents. But believe me, this is an important um, discussion that you that will kind of need to follow through. But this is how you would do it. Eight to the two thirds, you would do it this way. If you did it this, if you did it without the parentheses, you just did what you went eight carat two thirds. Well, you would get this would uh, yield the incorrect answer. You need the parentheses around the two thirds. Again, a uh, topic for another uh, video or another lesson. But uh, anyways, so this is basically, we kind of covered a lot of ground. If you're, um, you know, if you got this right, then that's excellent. Congratulations. If you kind of like were thinking or like, oh yeah, this, sound, this is familiar to you, it, it should be familiar to you because all of you out there, if you're taking, you know, if you're at this point in your career, You've obviously graduated high school. You've obviously had algebra, years of algebra, at least college algebra, maybe even more than uh, that. Some of you out there probably even had calculus. So you've seen this. Of course, you've uh, likely, if you're not using it on a, a regular basis, you've forgot that. That's why you really do need to study um, for these uh, tests. Okay. Uh, um, I think what happens is a lot of people... Uh, you know, they don't put the effort in and then they go in and, and, they, and they have to end up retaking the exam. So really, you know, spend the time, at least with the math portion, well, all the subjects, but, but in terms of math, what I'm speaking about here, um, you know, it is going to require a good amount of effort to, uh, you know, relearn what you got to relearn. So let's go on and wrap up this video. Again, if you're interested in my uh, checking out my MTTC elementary education math prep course. I'll leave the link to that in the description of this video. At the time of this video, I've been on YouTube for like 12 plus years and um, uh, literally have hundreds and hundreds of videos that can help you out. And uh, one of the things that I'm I proud, you know, I'm proud of, uh, and it didn't start off this way when I started on YouTube because I'm really passionate about making math videos, is um, I've recently uh, uh, obtained over a hundred thousand subscribers that's a milestone so thank you very much if you consider becoming a subscriber but I have millions of views on my videos and it's just because I work hard at what I do okay and what I love to teach math so the, the point I'm making is if you're going to go into education and you know be a math or be a teacher is just work hard at being the best you can. And uh, I'm grateful for all those uh, experienced teachers that helped me you know, along the way. And just keep learning, keep improving, getting better. And hopefully I can help you uh, along the course of your career as well. So anyways, two uh, resources you can check out. Hey, if you liked the video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up. And leave me some feedback. Uh, what's your background? Um, were you a straight uh, education major in college or maybe um, like a lot of teachers 
uh, maybe you had a degree and you're going into education from another career, which is always kind of cool because you have even broader experience to share. So any feedback would be good feedback. I always end my videos when I'm speaking to fellow teachers uh, with this. Uh, a lot of teachers have to retake uh, certification exams. Don't um, don't feel bad if you're one of them. Okay, uh, plenty and plenty of people, uh, the teachers are out there uh, and they have to take them. I know for myself, I took the Praxis exam, and it depends on what state again you're on. You're in MTTC is for uh, Michigan, but the Praxis exam covers several states. But I took the particular math test that. Uh, covered middle and high school math and it was it was challenging I have a degree in math and a master's degree and believe me it was it was a, a challenging exam so you got to study but I, my point here is that I want to say and I could be off with these stats but I, so I my memory is telling me that it was like 40 50 percent of the people that took this exam the first time out didn't make it okay uh, so there's a lot of people who have to retake uh, certification exams so don't get discouraged if if uh, you're one of them okay and if math is the thing that's holding you back what you got to do is really kind of buckle down and get focused on that particular area that's troubling you learn the material just go ahead and you know learn it and then retake it and you'll um, I'm sure uh, certain achieve your goal but with that being said I definitely wish you all the best in your education uh, career um, we definitely need great teachers out there, which I know you will be one of them. So uh, thank you for your time, and have a great day.